Ladies and gentlemen, in today's video, I'm going to be breaking down the three underlying reasons of why studying engineering is so hard. What this means is that I'm going to break down what it truly takes to succeed during an engineering degree and what you need to prepare yourself for if this is something that you really want to do. Now, most people think that studying engineering is difficult because of the complex mathematics and science and you know that is a part of it, but really there's a lot more to it and that's why I wanted to make this video. Also, I don't want this video to discourage anyone or completely turn you off engineering, but what I do want to do is expose you to the reality of studying engineering. That way, those of you that really want to do it can get started on the right foot. Okay, so the first reason that engineering can be so difficult is because of the mental challenge. And this challenge really comes in two forms. The first one we've already kind of touched on and it's the complex material. So this is the high level maths and science. And the second one is the large amount of mental stamina that is needed to succeed. And it's this second one that gets most students. So it's not so much about the difficulty of the content, it's more about how long it takes to learn, study, practice, and fully absorb these topics. For example, a pretty typical learning process for someone in engineering who's really trying to understand a concept will look something like this. First, they'll go to a one to three hour lecture and get exposed to the topic or concept. Then they'll need to do some private study and revise the lecture material and clean up their notes. Next, they'll then need to go to a tutorial and get further explanation and work through some actual problems using the concepts they've just learned. After this, they'll then need to do some more private study and go back over the tutorial questions they've just done in class and make sure that they fully understood what happened in each question. Finally, they'll need to do a bit more private study and actually test that they can do these sort of practice questions all on their own. As you can imagine, when you're having to do this for multiple courses at a time, your ability to concentrate and study for long periods of time on a regular basis is really going to have to expand. During high school or at some sort of other day job, your mental Mental stamina may have allowed you to focus for two to three hours if you were one of the more disciplined ones, but in engineering this just isn't going to cut it. Several times a week in engineering you're going to need to put in four to six hours of deep focused work, and as a newbie this is quite difficult. Personally I think this is where a big sticking point is for many first and second year students, as the people who aren't able to build up their mental stamina really start to struggle as the complexity and intensity rises in those later years, and this is where people end up failing courses or just completely dropping out of engineering. Now, building up your mental stamina isn't something that you can do overnight, but is definitely something that you can actively work on and build up over time. So if you are thinking that there's no possible way that you can do engineering because your attention span has been destroyed by TikTok, there is hope for you if you're willing to put in the work. All right, and the second reason that engineering is so difficult is the schedule. Engineering is widely known as having one of the most jam-packed timetables, and with this comes a certain level of commitment. In your first and second year of engineering, it's highly likely that you're going to have classes scheduled on every day of the week, and some of those days are going to be absolutely jam-packed with back-to-back -back classes. This means that every day you're going to have to be prepared for a full day's worth of lectures, tutorials, and labs, and when you're not in these classes, you're going to have to be spending a lot of time either studying or working on assessment items. In engineering, they really do like to grade us in a million different ways, so there's always going to be some piece of assessment you could be working on. For example, between all your classes at any one time you could have to do an online quiz, a lab report, an assignment, a group project or even a presentation so there really isn't going to be a lot of downtime. In particular and especially in engineering group projects tend to be a professor favourite and in my opinion this is because it means that there's less marking for the professor to do and they can also palm it off as a real life scenario project as engineers tend to work in teams but realistically for you as a student what this means is that you need to find extra time to work in a team and also meet up and work through things together. In my experience group projects can be a bit of a gift and a curse because on one hand you can get a really good group where everyone contributes equally and everything goes smoothly but on the other hand you can also get a really bad group where everyone completely ghosts you and you end up having to do the entire project on your own. Usually in your first year when you don't really know who anyone is this is where you can be stitched up and end up in one of these dodgy groups but as a bit of a pro tip once you figure out who the students are that actually turn up to class and seem to know what they're doing, these are the people that you want to make friends with and work with on group assignments because they're way less likely to let you down. Now another unique part of an engineering degree is that you're going to have to spend some time doing an internship. From my understanding at most universities it's actually a requirement to spend a certain amount of days doing an internship in order to graduate so you aren't just going to be doing internships to earn a bit of extra money. At the university that I went to you had to complete a minimum of 60 days as an intern anytime 
throughout the degree and it was up to you to find someone to hire you and log the hours with the university. At other universities I've heard that you can get full semesters off where you just completely focus on the internship but this really is going to vary depending on what university you go to. Either way throughout your time at university you're going to have to be making resumes and applying to internships. Also just so you know depending on your major and what types of companies you choose to apply for the hiring process for some of these internships can be quite involved with things like multiple interview rounds and also small projects. Again this is just another one of those things you'll have to find a way to fit in but as you can see your schedule is going to get quite full. Okay and the third reason engineering is so difficult is the lifestyle. Now we've talked about all the time it takes to learn engineering content properly, we've talked about what mental stamina you need in order to succeed and we've also talked about the typical schedule of an engineering student but what effect will all this have on your lifestyle? Well for starters regardless of what you were doing before you started your engineering degree whether that be high school or some sort of day job you're going to have a lot less time. As an engineering student going to university is like your day job. Here you'll put in 8 to 10 hours of work which includes learning all the new material and then when you leave and you go home this is where you start your second job of being a student. At night or on the weekend is where you'll find a short pause and what feels like a never ending treadmill of new information and here is where you'll find time to study, complete assignments and prepare for exams. Unlike school, at university any time spent practicing or revising content is done in your own time and given that engineering has so much content to get through this is going to eat up a lot of your nights and weekends. Given this extra investment of time that engineering requires, things like hobbies, hanging out with friends and even spending time with family all gets cut right back. Now I'm not saying that the 4-6 to six years that it takes you to get through your engineering degree means that you need to lock yourself away in a room somewhere so you can get through all the content but it does mean that being organized and studying efficiently will pay off big time. I've personally made quite a few videos on the different study techniques and strategies I use to get through engineering and if that's something you're interested in be sure to have a look through the videos on my channel to get some ideas. In any case, things like making an assessment list, using a calendar and simply just being prepared for things as they come will take a lot of stress out of the hectic timetable. All in all, engineering really will challenge you in a lot more ways than just the content itself but if you can make it through you can end up working on some of the most unique projects in the world and you can also end up scoring some of the best compensation in the world. Anyways, I hope that you learned something from this video and if you did enjoy it you might like this video here where I share what a day in the life of a structural engineer really looks like or that video there where I share what the most important topics to learn are in structural engineering. As always thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.